It's up there, you know, the atmosphere. You see the clouds, you feel the weather, but there are things you don't see. Gases, pollution, those things can affect you too. It's time to take a deep breath and figure it all out because it's our air. I know we've been talking about our air, but because water vapor is such an important component of our air, it's crucial that we understand how it gets into the air and how it leaves. Any ideas on that? Evaporation. Evaporation. Rain. Rain. The hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle, exactly. You guys remember that from elementary school, don't you? Yeah. 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 Well, just in case you were absent that day, here's a quick review. Water covers about 70% of the Earth's surface. All of the water on Earth is connected through the hydrologic cycle. And that water is moving constantly from one place to another and from one state of matter to another. Let's start with the water in the oceans. As the sun heats the water, it evaporates, changing from a liquid state to a gaseous state to become water vapor in the air. Water vapor is an invisible gas. Water vapor rises with hot air, and when it reaches colder layers in the atmosphere, it condenses to form clouds, which are made up of liquid water droplets or solid ice crystals. Air currents move the clouds and transport the water to other parts of the world. When the water droplets or ice crystals in a cloud become large enough and heavy enough, some of them will fall back to Earth as precipitation. And keep in mind, when you're thinking about air pollution, precipitation can bring air pollutants down from the sky and onto land and water. Most precipitation falls back into the oceans. Only 9% falls onto land. Of course, all of these movements are happening all the time. Water is constantly changing from liquid to gas states and back again through evaporation and condensation. Water freezes and becomes a solid, then thaws and becomes a liquid again. So you can see that the water on Earth spends a great deal of its time just hanging out, lounging in the air. Sometimes in the mysterious form of invisible water vapor, and sometimes as clouds. When you watch clouds forming, they seem to appear like magic out of thin air. But what you're really seeing are the properties of air at work on the water vapor in the air. And we're gonna recreate that process in a controlled scientific environment. We're gonna make a cloud in a bottle. First though, you have to remember that there's water vapor in the air in this room and in the air in this bottle. But we can't see it because it's a gas. Down here at the Earth's surface, the air is warm enough to keep that water vapor from condensing and forming a cloud. So, how are we gonna get a cloud to form? Well, inside this bottle, we're gonna create an environment that simulates the atmosphere. I've already added a little bit of water inside of our bottle. That increases the amount of water vapor available for our cloud to form. And now I'm gonna apply pressure. This pressure will increase the temperature and simulate the lower levels of our atmosphere. Warmer temperatures, higher pressure. And then when I release the pressure, it'll be like higher up in the atmosphere. Lower temperatures, lower pressure. Here we go. But that's not much of a cloud, is it? That's because we're missing a key ingredient, dust particles in the atmosphere. I'm gonna add some dust particles to our bottle in the form of smoke from these matches. You can see the smoke rising straight up. And now I'm gonna apply pressure again. You can see that our cloud that was already in there is dissipating because I'm increasing the pressure, which increases the temperature and it's back to being lower in the atmosphere. When I decrease the pressure by removing this top, the temperature will decrease and it will be like the upper part of the atmosphere. Here we go. Cloud. Much more impressive, wouldn't you say? So remember, the next time you see a cloud forming, you'll know that you're seeing the properties of air in action in this layer of the atmosphere. In our quest to understand air pollution, we have to know about layers of the atmosphere, especially the layer closest to Earth. You know, the one in which we live. See, proper English. See, this isn't all about science. We can learn about other subjects as well. That layer is called the troposphere. It's where most of the air is and where most weather and pollution happen. 
Scientists have divided the atmosphere into layers based on the temperature gradient within each layer. The air density continues to decrease as you travel up through all the layers of the atmosphere, but temperature rises or falls as you move up, depending on which layer you're in. Temperatures in our layer, the troposphere, decrease as you move up. Part of the sun's energy directly heats the Earth's surface. Another fraction is radiated back into the troposphere and absorbed in a process called the greenhouse effect. As a result, it's warmer closer to the Earth. That fact is the key to understanding why air moves around so much in the troposphere. It's also important to remember two properties of air. Air is a fluid, and hot air is less dense and rises. Because the troposphere is warmest at the bottom, air flows and hot air rises, there is always a lot of air flowing up and down in the troposphere, creating wind, air currents, and weather. Let's see how that works. As you can see, I've got a giant tub of water. Water is a fluid, just like air. We're gonna heat the water and see if we can get it moving around, just like what would happen in the atmosphere. What I'm gonna do is take some food coloring and inject it right in the middle in the bottom of the tub. And then I'm gonna do the same with blue food coloring, except I'm gonna do this over to the sides. So put some on this side and a little bit on this side. All right. Now, I'm gonna take this cup of steamy hot water, put it right underneath where I laid the red food coloring. The water in the cup heats up the bottom of the tub. The water in the tub directly over the cup will start to warm up, it will start to expand and become less dense, and when it does, it will rise. You can kind of see it starting right there. Just like the same thing would happen in the troposphere. When air pressure gets lower, the gas becomes less dense, rises up. And it will take the food coloring with it. You'll be able to see the food coloring go right up to the top. What you'll also start to notice is as that water comes up to the top because it's becoming less dense, the water on the sides is cooler. It's more dense. And that's how air gets moving around in the troposphere and why it keeps moving. The hot air at the bottom is always rising up and the cool air at the top is always sinking down. The height of the troposphere can vary from four miles to 12 miles, depending on location, season, and weather conditions. The boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere, the next layer up, is called the tropopause. Unlike what happens in the troposphere, in the stratosphere, temperatures rise as you move up because it has the ozone layer that's absorbing solar radiation. That ozone up high in the stratosphere is good for us. We like it. Ozone down in the troposphere near the ground, however, is bad for our health. Because the denser, cooler air in the stratosphere tends to stay at the bottom, and the less dense, warmer air tends to stay at the top, the air in the stratosphere tends to be relatively stable. Commercial airliners often cruise just above the tropopause in the stratosphere to take advantage of this calmer air. There also isn't much moisture in the stratosphere, so virtually all clouds you see are in the troposphere. Guess what? There are other layers in the atmosphere, but we don't really talk about them because 99.9% .9 of the mass of the atmosphere are in those bottom two layers, the troposphere and the stratosphere. Now, the troposphere is where most of the action happens. And by action, I mean air flowing up and down and around, water coming and going, temperatures rising and falling. The troposphere is also where most air pollution happens. Understanding the properties of air, how the troposphere works, and how air moves around our planet helps us understand how air pollution moves from place to place and how it ends up in our air.